It's pretty simple. If you can't show it on TV and you can't air it on the radio, you shouldn't have it in the classroom. And that is what sparked the FCC standard bill. So you just heard from Kimberly Fletcher, the president and CEO of Moms for America. The group was instrumental in passing House Bill 900, or the Reader Act, in Texas. The legislation, also known as the FCC Standard Bill, it requires schools to keep to the same standards of decency the Federal Communications Commission puts in place for television and radio programming. With us now to weigh in, Kimberly Fletcher joins us live, along with country music singer-songwriter John Rich, who's also a member of the Moms for America advisory board. So welcome to you both and thanks so much for coming on. Uh, clearly we've seen this as a victory for the Moms for America group celebrating their win. They sent out a tweet confirming that saying the Reader Act is law in Texas. Thanks to Jared Peter Patterson for his dedication to protect Texas children. Thanks to Governor Abbott for signing. Encourage every state to pass this and thanks to John Rich for if I can't show it on TV and can't air it on the radio, you can't have it in the classroom. And Kimberly, we'll go to you on this. Is it really that simple? Uh, tell me about the main objective of this bill. It, it really is that simple. I mean, we have moms who are going into school board meetings and they're being having their microphone shut off for reading what their children are being exposed to in the classroom. And sometimes they're being escorted out of the school board meeting. And we've even had moms escorted out in handcuffs because of what they're reading. And what the school board members claim is, well, it's on public TV and we can't have that on public TV. And I'm, they're making our case for us. If you can't if you can't read it at a school board meeting, you certainly should not be having it inside the classroom and shoving it down our children's throats. And it was the very simple concept that we jumped on and we ran it through Texas and we were thrilled when it actually passed. Yeah, you know, you're referencing those school board meetings where we have seen parents' microphones turned off because they were reading some of the materials that they found offensive, and clearly uh, the listening audience did as well. And John, to you, why'd you become involved in this effort here and this organization? Well, I'm a parent. I think uh, Moms for America, you know, this is a very important group in our country. By the way, if you are a mom out there that's concerned about what's going on with your kids, you should join Moms for America. I mean, they are getting things done. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of members now I'm a dad. I don't like the thought of not only my kid, but any kid being exposed to things uh, that they shouldn't be exposed to at that age, you know, obscenity. And it's interesting how the simplest answer is a lot of times the hardest one to arrive at because it's, it's a very complicated issue. But a simple answer uh, was the correct answer. If you can't show it on TV and you can't read it on the radio, meaning uh, minors can't be exposed to it through those mediums, then you also can't expose them to it in a classroom or anywhere else. And I, I applaud the state of Texas for taking that on. We actually brought this before the state of Tennessee uh, first, and it almost got passed, and then it didn't get passed. So I'm hoping this comes back to Tennessee and, and, and also becomes law here and in every other state. Listen, the FCC has been around for decades and decades. They've had this rule in place since the beginning of radio and television uh, to protect kids from things that, that could harm them. And so uh, this law just reflects that just inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Again, we've seen it in Texas and potentially other states might take up similar legislation. We appreciate you both coming on and, and adding additional context to this bill. Kimberly Fletcher and John Rich, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.